So very welcome to another PNT Tea Talks. I'm Eduardo from Paper and Tea. Um, today's tea is actually one of my favorites. I've been looking forward to be able to present to you this tea. Today we are, let me introduce to you our Oriental Beauty. Okay, so we are back to a Taiwanese oolong. Um, for those who have been watching, I'm a fan of oolongs and a fan of Taiwanese teas. I lived in Taiwan for a year, so I have this very close connection to, to Taiwanese teas. I, I really I like the diversity they have. And today we're going to try one of, the, one of Taiwan's finest, okay, Oriental Beauty. So first of all, uh, it's an oolong. So oolongs, we know, are teas that are semi-oxidized. So when we talk about oxidation, this chemical process that we can see happening to an apple or avocados or bananas, and we apply them into tea, uh, we have black teas being fully oxidized, and then we have green teas that have no oxidations, and oolongs are right in the middle. Okay, so oolongs, they range from le very little oxidation, close to, close to a green tea, to very high oxidation, close to a, a black tea. Okay, so, and then we also have some oolongs in the middle, with middle oxidation, and in this case, what we will try today, Oriental Beauty, Oriental Beauty is a highly oxidized tea. Okay, so what we usually do, we break the leaves a little bit, we let them sit in contact with oxygen for oxidation to happen, and then this will change the chemistry and physics of the leaves. So altering the color, developing other aromas, developing, developing um, different tastes, different textures that we will eventually feel in the cup. Okay, so uh, the main two biggest oolong producers are China and Taiwan. So Taiwan is right in front of China, um, Taiwan, it's a very small uh, country, so it's, um, but within this very little surface, they are able to produce so many different kinds of teas, which is amazing. Okay, because we can find very little oxidation, very high oxidation, mid oxidation, high altitude, uh, rolled, uh, they, they are roasted. I mean, there is so much going on in Taiwan, which is fascinating. So, and Oriental Beauty, actually, originally comes from a, an area on the west side of Taiwan, okay, um, in, from an area called Xingxu, Miaoli, all that, that produces uh, this Oriental Beauty. Oriental Beauty has a very beautiful name. It was named after, uh, it was actually the Queen, Queen Victoria's favorite tea. So she named it Oriental Beauty. In Taiwan, or in Chinese, it's actually known as Tongfang Mei Ren, which translates as Oriental Beauty, okay? <clears throat> but beside that name, it has a lot of other names, okay? So let me show you the leaves so you can understand some of the other names we, we hear uh, related to, to Oriental Beauty. So here you can see uh, the leaves. The leaves, we see multiple colors. So we see a little green, black, uh, brownish, uh, also like some gold, some white tips. So we can see like a little, like the little buds, little white. So one of the names it actually gets is five color tea because it has a lot of different colors. We also, um, they also call it um, uh, Formosa Bai Hao. Uh, Bai Hao, it's something we've heard already in some other teas. We see it very frequently. For example, there is a famous white tea called Silver Needle which is a tea that is made of 100% bud and when the buds get dry, they usually they, they get like this kind of velvety texture, white looking and that's something we can find, those kind of buds, we can find them in different teas and for example, we can find it, see it here, so that's why it's also called Formosa by Ha by Ha meaning white fur, white fur okay, and um, also uh, Formosa is the old name for Taiwan so when the Portuguese first came to Taiwan, they saw this island, they, they thought it was so beautiful that it, they actually call it Formosa, okay, meaning beautiful in Portuguese, okay? Of course, with the, with the transformation of war within the, within the, the years. But, um, so Oriental Beauty, what makes Oriental Beauty so special? I will start uh, here, I'll do it Kung Fu, so I'll preheat my Gaiwan, I'll use Gaiwan for this. I usually tend to use a lot of Gaiwan for Taiwanese teas. I like it that way. So what's so special about 
oriental beauty. So besides being a highly oxidized oolong, um, it's an, a tea that has a lot to do with the place where it comes from. Okay, so we usually, when we develop aromas and flavors within teas, all the aromas and flavors that we feel in a cap, usually they come either from the manufacture process, so whatever we did to the leaves, sometimes it also comes from the, from the plant itself, so there are different varieties of plants and they will give us different, uh, different flavors or aromas. Uh, for example, yesterday we tried a uh, rich purple, which is a purple bud uh, tea, uh, which is a black tea produced in Kenya with a specific variety that has this purple bud and has a high concentration of specific antioxidants. So the same happens, plant is also very, very important. It gives a lot of notes and characteristics to the tea, to the cup that we will have at the end. And then one thing that is also very, very, very important, uh, and I love pointing it out, is um, the origin, okay? So here we, we can talk again about the terroir and how uh, this French word help us understand uh, that when a product grows in a specific place, surrounded by an environment, it, it will be unique. And in this, when we talk about place, we talk about soil, we talk about weather conditions, we talk about rainfall, we talk about sun exposure, we talk about different, different things that we understand as like the physics of the place, but we also understand other living 